Hi everybody. If you're here, we're gonna do some a cooling heat gain calculation. So follow along. Uh, first thing you're gonna do is open a browser. I've already got it open to mrhvac.com front slash free HVAC stuff front slash HVAC load calculator. And if you can't see that, let me pull this up here, and then you can just, uh, it's right there, highlighted in blue, and you can copy that, pause your video, and put it on a piece of paper. And I'll leave the link in the bottom of the video for you. I was going to develop my own heat gain calculator, and then I found this a few years ago and said, I can just use this. It's kind of free, and it's easy. Um, but like I put on the website, I encourage you to first and foremost use a professional to do your heat gain. And I would call Sears and a couple local contractors and let them know, yeah, yeah, we're talking to a bunch of people, you know, um, and see which one does an actual heat gain calculation. Ask them for the report. It should be free. If not, um, Sears will definitely give you a free report. And if you don't trust them, then you're here so we can do this. Now, step one of six is enter your job information. So you want their name, phone number, and everything. And, and you kind of have to fill this out for the guy. Or it'll ask, it for, it'll ask you to come back to this page at the end and redo it. Step two of six is design temperatures. And it's inside degree Fahrenheit, which is in the winter time, what you like, and then the outside is what the actual temperature is. So say if you're living in New York and you want the temperature 73 degrees in the winter and the outside temperature is on average, um, I usually go with the, the, the worst temperature, which is like minus 10. So you can do like put down zero because who wants a furnace that doesn't work on a day when it's minus 20 degrees and you get those a couple days so kind of try to envision what's the worst temperature day ever because you do want your furnace to work on that day and to keep up and that's what we're going to put in there and then the summer time um, the, the temperature difference so if your summer is 95 you should be able to get down to 70 if it has 25. Okay, so and then of course it would be um, 75 if it was 20, and then it would be 80 if it's 15 degree difference. But um, you always want to be prepared for the worst in this case. Move along. Construction details, gross wall construction details. Here's what they're looking for. They're looking for the square footage, what type of wall it is. So say you have a, a wall, a newer construction, it's a cavity insulation, it's, it's drywall, and you have R19. Actually, let's say it's, it's you know, mid-80s, and so you have R11 and drywall, and it's insulated with fiberglass. Okay, so you click that. And then the square footage of the gross wall is this. It's all walls that are exposed to the weather. Okay, and we're going to illustrate that real quick. And I didn't know that was up there. Okay, so w what they're looking for is let's say all walls that are exposed to the weather. Okay, and what I mean by all walls that are exposed to weather is this. Say we have your home here, okay, and what I would consider every wall, it's, it's a four room. We're just going to do this for simplicity. You know, it's, it's a basic home, and it's, it's a little ranch with four walls. There's four exterior walls, and these are exposed to the weather. This side, this side, this side this side. Now that's a wall. 
We're not talking in the basement, ceilings, or crawl space. This is a ceiling. Okay? And what they're not looking for, and some people get a little confused by this, but it's relatively simple. They're not looking for this wall that I'm about to make for you. Like say this is um, back in here is your kitchen, small kitchen, and then you have this wall right here that separates your kitchen from your sala, your your living room or dining room. They don't want this wall in that calculation. They only want this wall, this wall, this wall, and this wall. Okay, and we're gonna come back to that later. So let me shrink that, and then square foot is length times width. So if your wall is eight foot high and 10 foot long. It's 10 times 8, which is 80. And let's say you have four of those, then it would be 4 times, it would be 80 times 4, because you have four exterior walls. That's not what you put in there, you just multiply that, and that would be 30 to 320 square foot. Okay? Okay, so let's, we can leave that. Now, ceiling construction is the exact same deal. What is your ceiling made out of? Does it have insulation? Um, some ins some ceilings don't have insulation. Uh, for example, um, one that is exposed to an attic above it. Um, and some just are flat roofs or whatever. And then, so once you pick that out, they want the square foot of that again. And again, here's another illustration of what they don't want. Um, let's say you have Let's see, we got a two-story, and um, let's pull this up. All right, you have a two-story home, and inside that two-story home, of course, there's um, two sets of ceilings. There's usually a ceiling that is on top that has a roof over it, and then, or, or you know, your bedroom ceiling, whatever is upstairs and then there's a ceiling here that's like in your living room or kitchen so that you can let's do this oops Jerry said fine I'll get with you real quick okay we're gonna actually look inside this right now Hopefully, we're going to we'll make that a little bit bigger. And all I'm doing is removing the walls from the model. So that you can see better. And select. And delete. Okay. Now... We're going to go right inside here and see. And what I have to do real quick is make a new um, ceiling for this. Give me one second. And right to where am I? That should be right. Okay, there we go. So now we have a ceiling in there. Um, so let's go in and take a look. So this is your first floor. There's your exposed walls. Um, there's a ceiling. This is probably a ceiling for your kitchen or in your living room or dining room. They don't want that ceiling. Okay, they don't need that measurement. That ceiling's not exposed to the weather. What ceiling they do need is this one up here. If I can get inside there, let me try and get us a little closer. And then we'll rotate up. Yeah, you can't see it. Um, I made it the box a little too high. Oh, there it is. Like there in the corner, right? But oh, we can zoom in and probably rotate a little bit more there. Oh. No, that's not going to work. Okay, 
So anyways, I think you get the point. What they're looking for, again, is ceilings that are exposed to the weather. Floor construction, over conditioned space, no. Nope. Over garage, concrete slab, heated, unheated, some people have heated slabs. Um, infiltration, um, if you have a fireplace, it's, you know, you just put the number in here, say you have two fireplaces, you just put that number in there. Um, and the volume of cubic feet <coughs> for infiltration, what you're looking for here is um, like your dryer vent. Uh, let's see, a, a hole for a, a chimney, um, like say your stove pipe, so you measure the size of the hole. If you have a whole house fan, any hole that's in the side of your house, they want to know the size of it, the volume of it, and the number of fireplaces and the number of infiltration quality is. If your home is relatively new, it's probably very good with the um, you know, two by six walls and thick insulation. Average would be probably 70s to, you know, late mid 90s. Poor would be a home that's probably built pretty much before the 70s in, in the south and um, mid south. Or the duct location and insulation is pretty self-explanatory. Some duct work has insulation, some does not. The supply air temperature is mostly for heat loss. The below 120 degree Fahrenheit would be newer furnaces, um, high efficiency furnaces. Above 120 degree Fahrenheit would be an older style, 80% furnace. The way to test it is to basically just turn your furnace on, let it run, and stick a meat thermometer you know, through the ductwork and measure the temperature. But if you have a newer furnace, a high efficiency furnace, it'll be below that. The amount of people, assume two people per bedroom. It's not always the right way to do it. I mean, if you and your wife are you know, older and you don't have the kids in the house and it's only two people really, and when you have guests, you maybe have an extra person. If you have kids that have a lot of friends that are running in and out, you might want to bump the numbers up, you know, so you could say you, your wife, and three kids, so that's five, but your three kids, neighbors, and always there, you know, so you maybe you got seven really kids that are always there eating, that's how it was in our house. Appliances, um, it assumes just a normal range, if you got a gas range or a uh, Let me see, uh, how about an indoor grill? Um, and that has a big hole in it and it uses a lot of BTUs. Then you're going to have to add some extra BTUs to it. And right now they're just figuring fridge and stove and dishwasher. I believe that's how he figured that. But as you'll see in the next one, there's there's other things that might you might want to take into account. and. I'll actually I'll leave you a, a guide for that. Um, I'm going to put it on the website, and it's it's this actually. Hold on, let me try and get it to to drag over here. Come on, uh, it won't come over. Uh, but on the bottom, I'll have a um, a heat gain from occupants of conditioned spaces and appliances. I can't believe it won't come over. Hold on, give me a second. There we go. Come on. Come with me. It doesn't want to come over. Oh, there's part of it. Let's drag it over. There we go. Okay. This has... It didn't actually come over. I actually, I actually am... Uh, Okay, good. The degree of activity, total heat BTUs per hour for an adult male adjusted for a female. 
and you can see that it's um, seated at a theater, bowling, heavy work, um, athletics like a gym, walking, standing, sedentary work. Say you work in your home. But anyways, this helps you to, um, you know, if you got something else extra that you might want to add in, like a, I think a stove is 400 BTUs. But that's, I'm going to put that table on the bottom of this page where the video is so you can check that yourself. But yeah, I think it's 416 BT, 1600, and you can look it up online. Just Google if you got an extra appliance and see what the BTU rating is for that appliance. But usually 1200 to, to 1600 is the normal. <coughs> okay, this thing here is um, additional items for loss or gain. So, um, like loss would be a skylight. And put the description in here. And then down here, say, like a cooling gain would be um, like the bowling alley or the gymnasium. Or you'd put that in there and then the description of it for the report. And again, that'll be on that, that chart that I have below, and you can always find it on Google if you say, you know, I have um, you know, f this item at my house. I have a whole house fan. How much loss for my heating factors will that incur? Or an attic fan. You know, how much um, BTU gain or, or loss are we going to have from that? And it, it'll be somewhere on, on Google. And then step five or six is windows. So let's say we have a single pane clear window and it's made of metal. The area is eight square foot. And I want to know my BT, but you have to go through and do all your windows. And then and when you get done, you come to the bottom calculate and move along because you're going to do your doors skylights um, which way they're facing so this is for the cooling section okay really important too skylights and um, the size of the window panes so that we get it um, you know if you get triple pane great but if you have single pane, it's going to add a lot of, you know, watch. Let's see what it is. Let's just say you got seven square foot of window and it face. You know, we want to, let's clear that one. Let's say, let's say it's face the south because everybody likes to see, you know, and let's just say it's eight square. It has a lot of BTU gain. So it's really important to pay attention to the, um, the windows. And you have to press calculate in these before you can preview your reports. So anyone that has calculate on it. So it has one eight square foot window. So you know two foot by four foot has as much heat gain as a person, <coughs> a whole person. So imagine if you had a wall filled with four or five of them, that would be a smoking hot room. And you have to take that into account. Okay, and that's pretty much it for the heat gain and heat loss calculator. If you have any questions, leave them down at the bottom. But again, I encourage you to just let a professional do it. Take the weight off of you, and you know you don't have to buy from them. And that's it. Okay.